Go! 
Hello and welcome to the park. My name is Kaji Dosha and on behalf of this incredible congregation, the Park Avenue Christian Church, I welcome you to worship on this new year. New year, new day, renewed day. And so we invite you into a spirit of worship in which we encounter God. We ask the Holy Spirit to infuse us with love and power and strength. And we see how God is implanting us to nourish and to grow in this new season. Thank you for joining us here from New York. It's church. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Ooh. 
Scripture is from Dr. Wilda C. Gaffney's A Woman Lectionary for the Whole Church. 1 Peter, 1st chapter, 22nd verse, 2nd chapter, 3rd verse, year A, page 69. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have the love without pretense of children raised together, from a pure heart love one another persistently. You have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the living God abides forever. This is the word that was proclaimed to you as good news. Lay aside, therefore, all malice and all deceit, pretense, envy, and all slander. Like newborn babies long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If you have tasted that, the sovereign God is good. May God continue blessing the reading of his word. Amen.
Will you please pray with me? God, it's a new day, a new year, a new moment, a new opportunity to encounter you. Bless this time of reflection. Bless our opportunity to dig into your word. May it implant us deeply into the ground so that we may reach up towards you and your light. In Jesus' name, amen. At one time, I thought I was going to be a doctor. Organic chemistry class, however, changed all of that. Talk about weeding out. And speaking of weeds, in that part of my life, I spend a lot of time studying the life cycle of plants because that's what you do in biology class, or at least at the level I was at. So I would love for this passage to come to life. And if you would let me tell you the light, about the life cycle of plants, flowering plants specifically. So here we go. Something happens with pollen that was produced by another flower, and that pollen moves with the wind or maybe with an insect. And then maybe in that process, it even hits your respiratory system and allergies, and you have to stay home because it's COVID time still, and you can't go out with a runny nose anymore. But anyway, I digress. But maybe instead of that part, pollen makes that trip and it makes its way to a flower and it pollinates. And if the pollen hits right, it fertilizes. And if the fertilization works, it forms a seed, which is this protected vessel for potential life. Then the seed has to go, it has to move. It can't stay where it was because if it did, the new life would compete with the old in that place. So instead, the flowering plant depends on others, like the wind or an insect, to get those seeds moving to a new place where it can find fertile ground and take root. Suitable ground allows that seed to break open and only in that opening can the seed grow. But the ground must be suitable. It has to be healthy enough to nurture a plant. And there must be water, because water's life. The opening that happens when the seed opens, it's called germination. But once the plant breaks open and germinates, I thought then it just goes ahead and starts to grow. But no, there is an intervening step that I want to make sure we know. It germinates, and then it has to dig roots. Roots pick up those essential life elements, the water and the nutrients that the plant is going to need to grow. And only when the root structure is sufficient Efficient is the plant ready to produce a shoot and emerge from the soil. The shoot then turns into a stem which carries the nutrients up from the earth as the plant starts to reach towards the light. From the stem, the plant grows leaves which pull in the light and turn it into sugar. And as they do, they release oxygen. That's what we call photosynthesis. And when the time is right and the plant reaches a certain point of maturity, it's ready to develop a beautiful flower, which is where this process then begins again. A mature plant is productive, and it moves through these cycles as long as its own life continues, but its seeds, no matter what, those seeds endure. And in a way, in that way, life continues endlessly. I think that one of the most challenging components of our spiritual life is that we may or may not realize just how cyclical our spiritual lives are too. And the best, the closest analogy I've ever seen that we can find to that cycle, I think may very well be the story of a flowering plant. Check it. Life comes from life. Spirit comes from spirit. You from you and your faith, they come from somewhere. And that's important to remember 
because that is how you bear a lineage. And out of that productive energy, out of that lineage, out of that lineage, then you move, you travel, you find your way. And when the soil is right, and you found a setting that can nourish you, then you actually risk digging roots. You root, you're nourished, and then and only then can you grow and reach out to the light and synthesize and share the best of what you have. And then that cycle continues. You pollinate, you germinate, you root, you grow. You pollinate, you germinate, you root, you grow. And then you reach for the light, you share, and you cycle again. And I'm going to get right to the point. I think that one of the greatest frustrations in our faith journey, in our relationship with God, is expecting one season of that cycle to mimic the next. We often expect it always to be, just be the same in our faith life, but it won't be. It can't be, and I would say it shouldn't be. Your faith, our faith, is dynamic. It progresses, it nourishes, and it produces good things. But there's also what San Juan de la Cruz or St. John of the Cross calls the dark night of the soul. And that's the time when you're down in the ground and it seems like there's no light out there. And if and when that is you, I invite you to shift your perspective and understand that you're in that digging season. You are rooting deep into the soil. You are finding your nourishment or you are seeking it because you have to. And here's the thing, when you're down in the ground and you're in rooting and digging season, nothing makes you reach harder or even more gratefully for the light once you've germinated and rooted than those times when you wonder if there's any light at all. I just want to say to you, there is light because God is and God is present to you. And because the light shines in the darkness and cannot be overcome, even if that's unclear to you at the moment, because your spirit cycles. And that's good news. On this day, in which a new year reminds us that it's a new day, I encourage you to ask God about the season that you might be in right now. Is it digging season? Are you a wandering pollinator? Are you bursting through the ground, finding new life and sun? Are you spiritually productive? Can you think of times when you were any of those things? When you notice your place in the cycle of things and give thanks for the opportunity that God is giving you right here and right now, ask God then to help you to set an intention for where you would like spirit to be in the season to come. Just to remember, to include the phrase that Jesus taught us, thy will be done. I always say when your will and God's will are aligned, there is no greater joy. And some folks are saying, you may have heard it on Instagram, new year, new me, 2023. But let's, for us, let's celebrate new year renewed me, 2023. For even as the grass withers and the flower fades, the word of God endures and renews forever. Amen.
Full worship rightly includes the opportunity for us to give of ourselves, our time, our talents, and our financial resources. On our website, you can see various ways in which you can contribute to the outreach and ministry of Park Avenue Christian Church, and you're invited to do so now. Let us pray. We give our tithes and offerings to you, O Lord, in gratitude for all that you have given us. We ask now that you bless us as well as what we give, so that everything will embody your love here and everywhere. Amen. Continuing in prayer, O God, we lift our hearts and minds to pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May your healing presence be felt by the sick and dying, the victims of neglect and anger, of calculated cruelty and brutality, the lonely, the depressed, the imprisoned, the homeless, and the afflicted, particularly those suffering loss in violence, war, famine, cold, and natural disaster. At all times, but especially now, use human sympathy and kindness to bring to the suffering the reality of your power and compassion, so that your healing and grace may be known to those in need, even through the likes of us. We pray too for this city and this nation, particularly for our leaders and those in positions of responsibility and authority. Send down your Holy Spirit, O God, to enlighten us with your wisdom, discerning truth over lies and daring to witness to your righteousness and grace. As in Christ you loved and cared for those who did not return your love, may individuals and communities learn to love one another unconditionally and beyond deserving. May the gospel teach us all, the leaders and the led, to transcend self-interest and rejoice in the common good, caring especially for the marginalized, including those the ancient prophets named the widow, orphan, and alien. We pray for all the nations of the world. In this time of conflict and violence, particularly the war in Ukraine, we ask your spirit to guide us all toward peaceful settling of grievances and injustices and the resolving of political differences. Help us stop the savagery of nationalism, religious and, and racial prejudice and division, the impoverishing of the many for the luxury of a few, and the ignorance and arrogance that assumes that we're not all your children made in your image to be brothers and sisters, stewards of your creation. Finally, we pray for the Church Universal and for this congregation, Park Avenue Christian Church. May the worship, mission, and fellowship of your people of faith here and throughout the world be such in word and in life that others, even those of no faith, can recognize in us your joy, the first fruits of what you have in store for all humanity, if we would turn and trust in the good news of your love. In the spirit of Christ Jesus, then, as we begin this new year, may we be drawn anew into your purpose, united and strengthened for your service, from our sanctuary to the ends of the earth. All this and the silent prayers in each of our hearts, we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Friends, this is a joyful peace of the people of God. Our open table reflects our acceptance and inclusion of all as Jesus did. Here we are at Christ's communion table. For those of you at home, you are invited now to gather your communion elements in preparation for this Eucharist. This is Christ's table, and it is Christ Jesus who invites you to this feast remembering him his life death and resurrection 
all incarnated God's love, so that in him we are offered grace and strength to follow Christ wherever he leads. And so, we recall that on the night when Jesus was betrayed and crucified, he gathered with his friends, his family, his disciples, to share a meal together. First, he took bread, gave God thanks for it, broke it, and passed it around them, and said, This is my body, the bread of life, el pan de vida, broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to them, and said, This is the cup of the new covenant, la copa de nuve pata, the cup of eternal grace. Remus, let us pray. O God, send down your Holy Spirit and this bread and cup, and bless us with awareness of your gracious presence in our midst. Whenever we are gathered in remembrance of you, may this simple meal make us a blessing for this world you love so much, ambassador of your truth, your justice, and your loving kindness. Remember the prayer Jesus taught us and using the words and language that resonate most in our heart, we say, how a God who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ramos, let us pray. We rejoice in your resurrection promise to be with us when we gather in your name. Thank you for nourishing us today with your Holy Spirit in word, song, sermon, and this communion meal. Now send us out into your world, sharing your peace and justice, everybody you love. We ask all this in your most holy name. Amen.
Church, I invite you to rise in body or and or spirit to encounter this blessing. May the peace of our Lord Jesus, which surpasses all human understanding, fill your hearts and minds with the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And Happy New Year, Church. Amen.